I'd like to know what you think about access to your GP. Can you get one when you need one? Well, GPs in England will no longer be required to offer appointments lasting at least 10 minutes under their latest contracts. NHS England says that most consultations are about 12 minutes. As part of the changes, people over 75 will also be assigned one doctor to oversee their care. The chairman of the British Medical Association's GP committee, Dr Chand Nagpal, says doctors will be able to concentrate more on the needs of patients. These contract changes have been negotiated on a backdrop of GPs suffering uh, excessive workload, excessive bureaucracy and GPs who are lacking in morale. We've negotiated these changes so that GPs actually can once again be doctors with time to care for patients. Staying on the issue of access to GPs, it was in 2008 that Dr Daniel Ubani killed a Cambridgeshire man, David Gray, after he was injected with a lethal dose of painkillers. Dr Ubani, a locum doctor who'd flown in from Germany, gave Mr Gray ten times the recommended dose of diamorphine. Five years on, and the General Medical Council has been given new powers to check English language skills of all doctors working in the UK. As we heard, the government has also signalled reform over the way the system for out-of-hours GPs currently works. Let's talk to Rob Aldridge now. He's a specialist in clinical negligence at the Medical Accident Group. He remains sceptical over planned changes and on the likelihood of preventing another tragic death. It was a, a case that one of my colleagues ran where you're in a in a position where you need to provide a service to people as a general practitioner obviously does language skills are are one of the major assets okay so what do you think of these new rules well the idea is that um they're going to refer back to the general practitioners in-house to relate to the care of, of every particular patient as opposed to going out to a house and, and having locum GPs in. I mean, that, that's obviously a good thing. The problem is, to my mind, is that, that it's still not addressing the issue that's going to be pertinent. One of the main issues with, with general practitioners is the lack of, of general practitioners around. So there wasn't sufficient resources available to actually provide out of hours care. Now, that thing hasn't been addressed. There's still a shortage of general practitioners. So if you move it back to the general practitioners themselves, yes, they will know the patients that are involved, but you're still dealing with people that are going to have to be working, you know, out of hours, they're going to be working long shifts, and errors still may be, you know, a result from me. So are you saying, Rob, that the lessons haven't been learned? And it could happen again? I think the, a lot of the lessons have been learned. I mean, the Care Quality Commission have identified a number of issues, but particularly in relation to staffing. Now, this is a, a, an issue that needs to be addressed right from the source, and, and we need to be uh, getting qualified general practitioners in their roles so we've got sufficient to provide a, a good service to the patients. Can we be sure this won't happen again? Well, we can't until we've got the staff in there. I mean... If you haven't got the, the staff to provide the service or you're talking about patient, the uh, general practitioners, whether they're the, 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 the patient's own general practitioner or a locum gen, general practitioner that are working excessive hours and or um, there is insufficient cover to, to take on the demands, then there's always going to be delays in providing treatment and care and, you know, errors can still be made.